Welcome to another episode of Sanford Says. This is Lisa Holder, Chief Communications and Cultural Affairs Administrator for the City of Sanford. Today, we're talking about trails. It's summertime. Um, regardless, we're in Florida. 24-7, you can get out on, on, on our trails, and we're known for that. And I have two city employees with us that help to provide and offer these um, incredible outdoor activities for you. Chris Smith is an urban planner. He's been with the city for over 25 years, and he's in our planning department. We have Robert Bell. Robert Bell is the director of parks, and he is I've been with the city quite as long, almost as long as well, 32 Two. years. <laughs> okay. And so um, we thought it'd be a great time of the year, July, um, to talk about the opportunities that we have out there for trails in our wonderful city of Sanford. So let's just let's start. I know there's uh, there's plenty of them, Chris. You've been involved in since day one, really, in the planning of these trails. Do you want to just uh, give us an overarching picture about? the trail system in our city and access and all of that. Just sure, thank you very much, Lisa. Um, when I when I first got here, uh, you know, I did notice that the, the walkability of Sanford was, was lacking. And that was uh, mainly uh, from the older style streetscapes and uh, lack of no trails. Uh, but the city of Sanford, you know, was really poised and blessed to have be located along the river walk, along the uh, river itself, which is, you know, Lake Monroe which is part of the St. John's River. There was a good venue there to look at. Um, but one of the things that we were looking at was the walkability of Sanford just was not there. And so we concentrated on one of the easiest ways to do that is streetscapes where you're putting the pedestrians in charge of the cars and by, instead of vice versa. And the river walk it's, itself, you have a wonderful vista and venue there to be able to provide some connections there. And that's one of the things that we typically look at. So Sanford really didn't have any trails. They had a few sidewalks there and there. It was more of a car-centric type of a, of a city, which is very typical in a lot of cities. So a lot of these cities have embraced some of the things that you could do for walkabilities. One of the first trails that we certainly looked at, I was actually kind of sketching the Riverwalk Trail in 90, 1996 on my dining room table. <laughs> Wow. And I can scroll for them. So it was very exciting to be part of it. It actually started out as just a sidewalk with the Metro Plan Orlando as one of our major partners. Uh, and then several sections along the way was part of DOT. So we were able yeah. to design and create one of the longest shoreline, freshwater shoreline uh, river walks in actually Florida. Yeah, and it's almost a stretching of, of, of five miles. So it's been a well-used trail. And since then, uh, with the Parks Department and several other colleagues, we were able to con complete a couple of other uh, great trails that we have. And, and of course, the Terwilliger Trail that connects uh, our southern communities to the Riverwalk that runs north and south. Yeah. But basically, the Riverwalk Trail runs east and west. And then also, another micro trail is in the Goldsboro community, which yeah. will help bring in some of those uh, you know, folks from that area and make connections right. for those trails. So... Um, we're very pleased to, you know, to at least have be able to expo those three trails. Right. And then we also are partnering right now with the county as they're just now starting the Lake Monroe Trail Loop. Right. That's a very, very important, critical trail that will connect Sanford all the way to uh, 415 uh, as a multi, multi-use multi trail. So that literally will connect uh, the Riverwalk Trail, make it extremely much more longer. And uh, as you know, the Riverwalk Trail connects up to the Volusia County and the Seminole County Trail System which is part of the coast-to-coast -coast, uh, uh, a trail across Florida, which is over 210 miles. Yeah, I mean, that's something to really to put a feather in our cap, as, as, as I was saying, because um, that we're, a, we're a state where outdoors is, a, is really all year long, basically, is, is, a, right. is a great activity, being outdoors for people. And, um, you know, maintaining those trails and all of that is something that, is put into consideration too, and that's where I mean Robert and his crew and his team uh, are, are are very um, involved in that, obviously, and um, because you know we can build them, but then right. you know they need to be maintained just a lot, and that the city of Stanford also does that as responsible. And, for that. and and Robert and his crew do a great job. They as they view uh, basically the Riverwalk Trail as more of a park. 
Yeah, so a it's linear really park. like a linear park. Yeah. And it is connecting Fort Mellon Park, and on the other end, it actually connects the zoo. So yeah. he actually views that and, 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 and maintains those as, as, as well as any park that we have. Yeah, and it's yeah. actually, Robert, it's Parks and Rec Month, isn't it? So it this is, is kind it of a is good... It is Parks and Rec <laughs> Month. And, and uh, the, you know, the trails are, are something that we're proud of, and um, our guys do a lot of, a lot of work. Um, and it is a lot of work. I mean, if you think of, of what we're doing, you know, just for mowing or edging, edging, you know, on a five-mile trail... Uh, is is more than five miles because you've got several sections that you have to edge one way, come back the other. So there are ten to fifteen miles of edging, right? You know, just in in one section of a trail. Right. Yeah. Um, and we we've got a little over six miles of trails just within within Sanford itself. Yeah. Between the three trails. Yeah. Um, so it it is a lot of maintenance. Um, we do have groups that come out on our trails. They help us out with picking up trash, um, things like that. We appreciate the public's help on it. Uh, mm -hmm. We get phone calls when we have issues because yeah. it is a large area. Um, so uh, I think the public takes a lot of pride in, in our trails as well, which is, which is great. And it's uh, a partnership mm -hmm. uh, that, that we really enjoy and, and, helps keep Sanford looking beautiful. Yeah, yeah, I think that that's the, it's just again that the natural beauty of the city too is, a, is, is an attraction and we're a destination and it's not just the, you know, the downtown area. There's other things to do here that we like to right. share and promote. And there's a lot that goes into that, the planning behind these things, and then you know the maintenance of that. And we want the quality of life and for our visitors and the, and our residents to to be there. They have access to that, and so uh, I think it's really wonderful. And we see a lot of people out there all day long, right? Because oh, yeah. city halls right yeah, next to Riverwalk. Uh, in the past, you know, it really wasn't a the city of Sanford really wasn't a day visit. You know, people would come and go, go to the zoo and leave, or go downtown for a little while and leave. But now. With the trails and and other venues, you're able to stay in Sanford for the entire day. You can yeah. enjoy Fort Mellon Park. You can you can go to the zoo. You can go downtown. You can go to our, our marina. We also have carefree boats there, where you can uh, hop on a boat and uh, you don't need to own a boat. And uh, so there are many things to explore and and take a look at. And and the best thing about it is you're not in your car. Right. You're not in your car. You don't have to get in and out of your car yeah. and go to another venue. You can do the walking. So the walkability score of downtown Sanford was greatly increased. So we're above the 70 mark in our downtown corridor. Yeah. So the benefits of these trails are great, and that's one of them. It takes cars off our streets. It allows because we want people, not the cars. So mm -hmm. this, uh, the cities, and when you're starting to do more urban planning, creating parks, creating pocket parks, and the city right now is creating one of a, a fantastic downtown park at park, which is called Artisan Square. And it is going to have a great artwork in it as well. It's a place to relax. The Parks Department right now is installing a downtown uh, restroom facility for there. Um, so that's greatly needed in the downtown. Right. And you could enjoy that and stroll up and down there. So the trails uh, actually benefit a lot. And it, you know, it acts, you know, helps for clean air. There's less pollution. There's less accidents. Less cars on the road. It becomes more enjoyable. Right. Yeah, and they're and they're connectors. Um, you know, whether you come and park downtown and then walk our trails, or you come down the river on a boat. We have day slips. They can come in and park at the day slip. Right. Come out, get on the trail, walk the trail. They could. We're very convenient to the downtown area. They can come down, have lunch for the day. Um, go do their walking, have lunch. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, little uh, smoothie shops down right. along the way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we've, we've noticed several employees at the hospital coming out there yep. to uh, stand on the river walk and underneath the trellises and, and have their lunch. Right. And get, and get away, get, get relax a little and bit. Patients. Right. And patients. Right. Yeah, 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 that's true. There. That's true. Yeah, we have seen some of the patients. So, and, and then was one of the questions, the concerns that we, we received was, well, why aren't there more trees along the segment of old U.S. 1792. And that's because we have uh, MOT and Green Book type uh, highway design clearance. Wait, what's MOT? Maintenance of traffic okay. and greenway. Uh, the Green Book standards basically for designing roads. We still have to design the roads just like DOT. 
We follow the same requirement. So there's a clear zone requirement. Okay. So we were only allowed to add a few trees along on the river walk side. It's a very constrained right of way. Okay. So on that section right there, there is not as many trees as right. there are in the downtown urban setting. So right. on a hot day, I suggest, you know, bring plenty of water. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, right. take your time. Don't overdo it. Right. And uh, we also have a new bike uh, uh, station and a rest area. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. And, there, but is it, and there's a restroom and going restroom in also. Restroom going in. It'll be open soon once yeah. the power's turned on. Yeah. But it's a good rest stop there. You could park. And, 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 the, and, we, and the, the county's working with doing improvements. They're, they're going to end up right. having a trailhead. Um, yeah. I believe it's still on for the um, I-4 or along the I-4 yeah. corridor there. Okay, so closer to the connection. zoo section, section? Well, we once you get to the I-4, there's a section now that you, there, we have a divider lane. You can actually, from Wayside Park, connect on over, cross now. So that's finally connected. Okay, now so that is, where is that? That is connected at I-4 and Seminole Boulevard up by the zoo. So okay. that connection yep. is complete now. So One of the new sections at DOT and the county are looking at is a way to get from our Sunrail station to our downtown. Okay. So they're working on those gap sections now. Okay. To get you across those tracks safely. Right. And so you, you hear that, folks. That's that's the state of Florida, Department of Transportation. Department of Transportation. Works with the city. And the county. In, and the county, because it's in our city, in our county. However. Right. And all of our municipalities are working on uh, multimodal projects, whether right. it's the county, the city, the state. Okay. Um, and a lot of these connect together and, and make it more accessible for people that don't drive right. or, you know, like to bike and go to right. these facilities. Right. So you, you know, if you don't like to bike a long way, but you want to bring your bike down and bike um, river walk, you can get on the sun rail, put your bike on there, get off, get off the sun rail. Right. And then make a yeah. connection to river walk and ride river walk. Through the Terwilliger Trail. Terwilliger Trail, right. Yeah, it was a Terwilliger family that actually had a farm right there. Okay. So the Terwilliger family, there's a wonderful plaque okay. that tells the entire story of the family about midway on Terwilliger. It's not a very long trail, right. but that's where the farm was. Okay. And, and so it's a good connector. It. And it's a great connector. And it's actually become also uh, a, a dog walk. So there's yeah. a lot of residents that live right there and they actually are actually walking on that. And Robert is working. He has uh, pet bags and, and stuff oh, along okay. those way. And yeah. See, that's what's another thing because we are a dog friendly, pet friendly city, and right. so we even have a paw park. Wait, right? we have a dog park. That's uh, so you can make it a day. Yep. Bring your dogs out. It's an off leash park. And it's an off leash park. Yeah. Now, do we? Um, I wanted to mention a couple things about the Seminole Boulevard and the Riverwalk. We have those utility box art wrap. So there's right. art being, um, you know, installed over there, and we're also purchasing a, a new sculptures as well. So not only do you see you know you have the health and wellness aspect of it but you have the aesthetic um of art on this on on the walk as well and um so it's 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 really all your senses you know your your visual with the beautiful sunsets and sunrises well, yeah and even those sports-minded people once this um connection's done with seminole county um you'll be able to go ride around lake monroe 27 miles Right. Which is, uh, you know, a great venue for um, bike riding, yeah. uh, for marathons, which, yeah. you know, the mm -hmm. city's been, ever since this has been in uh, fruition, uh, we've been getting phone calls. Hey, when's this going to be done? We'd like to do a marathon around Lake Monroe. And, yeah. Um, so uh, we're, we're seeing a lot of activity and interest in this new development coming through. Yeah, I mean, so that just goes to show you that this is just one more thing. Can we talk a little bit more about the Goldsboro Trail and, and kind of like um, what where that goes and how that is part of the whole big picture, too? <laughs> well, like Twilliger Trail is considered one of our micro trails. Okay. Uh, Riverwalk would be certainly our macro type of trails. But it actually gets into the communities. So it's a little bit more difficult to uh, traverse in some of these, the older communities, to find a way to get through there. Um, yeah, the, the initial the initial plan for this trail um, was to connect several neighborhoods and to be able to connect the Goldsboro area to the downtown area. Right, right. Um, future plans are to hopefully finish that connection to the downtown area. Um, one of one of our our main plights of, of getting that trail down there 
is we we need a pedestrian uh, pathway across 1792. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, which is a very expensive endeavor. Right. So, oh, I see. Um, so it requires an, an overpass, basically. Oh, does it? Yes. The yes. DOT wants an overpass for either that one or at the rails. Okay, because but it's if... very important to know. You know, yeah. I want to make sure that the listeners understand when you're on a multi-use trail, though, be careful with your bike. Be careful of walkers as well. But when you get downtown now, don't think you can ride on our downtown sidewalks with a bike. You cannot. Okay. And there's a great reason for that, and it certainly is safety. People coming in and out of stores. So generally, just be on the trails with your bike, or you, you need to be in the road. Now, okay. when you're in a road, uh, a bike is considered an automobile. So okay. it needs to follow. But be safe out there. Right. Yeah. That's a great point. Yeah. You, you have to obey, obey the road rules, even, even if um, you're just out doing daily riding in your neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, you're considered a vehicle. Right. Yeah. Now we do have bike racks throughout the city, right? So if mm -hmm. you're bringing your bike down here and you want to, you want to park it, lock it up, you can do that. Right. And right. and they're they're located all around our city, correct? Robert is trying to strategically locate those and and really good hot spots where the bike riders are. Yeah. Yeah, and we we've got different varieties of them. We have uh, several that we call hitch and post and. Right. Okay. We've gone with a few direct uh, decorative style that will have, like, the city logo in them. They're right. half hoops. Right, right. They, they look more like decorations, but they're bike racks. Of course, and, yeah. And just getting people to know they're there and uh, able to park them. And it gives them a location that's secure to the area that they want to go shopping or go to a restaurant for lunch for the day. Yeah. Yeah, and I know it's in the plans. It's one of our things to do is to create some kind of, um, you know, online. Um, we have this, all this information online, mm -hmm. but like a some kind of brochure where people can use a QR code or something like that and see where they're at, find out where our, where our bike, um, what would you call them, bike? locks are or stations bike okay. stations are at uh, you know what i think would be really great too that we could do down the road is list where are your dog um fountains are uh, mm -hmm. along the river walk because i know right. when i take my dog out you you know you're responsible for your own pets but right. it's nice to know that the city or whatever entity is providing you know water for your for your animals and that's that's just a nice and people it so is. it's just it's a nice um thought well, we have but, a couple of bike shops and bike you know, shops yeah, yeah brought in that new venue that we didn't have new business yeah that's exactly true and so this is just another uh function service right. uh of government a local government that it, it doesn't happen by you know osmosis it is something that people work very hard behind our planners and also um we have almost every city has a parks department mm -hmm. parks team because this is just a service of, of local governments to provide those um, opportunities for health and wellness. And I know the city of Stanford invests in that. Right. And know? that's what, you know, that's w one of the things about urban planning and some of the advances that have been made. And I've, I've encouraged Robert, his staff, my, uh, my staff as well, as well as the car commissioners, please go out and look at the other cities, see what they're doing. And one of the inventive things that I saw in, in a city was they actually took a spot a car spot downtown and it, all it was was bike racks just for bikes now if you think about it hmm. we could we were able to get 20 customers right there with their bikes versus one in a car right so the businesses <laughs> and actually the one right there where the bike rack was in that space they loved it yeah because there's 20 customers that just came right in front of their store right and and that's a great you know not just even and also not just bike riding we're talking about walking walking, walking. is extremely healthy for you and no matter what get out age, of your car running <laughs> get out of your car walkability that's right. the that's the big picture here and right it also Chris? yes it is and it's, it's safety too you started this uh, episode so you know slowing the that. traffic down getting the people there safely yeah walking and, and just well, having like, a good time yeah and when we talk about being in your family and your pets when we talk about pets whether it be on sidewalks trails think about safety mm -hmm. um, asphalt can get very hot you know well over 120 degrees your dogs won't tell you, hey, my feet are burning. <laughs> no, I know. Um, so, so, hey, walk them on the grass. It's right next them, door. Walk them on the grass. Wear, wear dog, dog socks. Dog yeah. Boots. Hey, maybe Drum that's box. a maybe that's a problem <laughs> item we should think about. Yeah. <laughs> Sanford dog socks. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so. 
But so that's you right, gotta Robert. come up with some logo dogs. There you go. <laughs> that's cute. Yeah, um, yeah. Anything else that we want to say, um, Chris and Robert, about just uh, the the trails and what's well, coming up? What about the future of, of what we're? There are a couple of concepts that they're, we're looking at. We're learning now that um, you know with the affordability of Florida, sometimes the people are li liking to live and people want you know the denser living is becoming downtown, so they really don't want the expense of a car. So they're actually walking to their job, or they're actually taking some of our transit uh, uh, mobility units that we have. We mm -hmm. remember we have the uh, we have the links that goes east and west, the north and south. We also have our free trolleys, uh, and again the bike rides and trails. and And there are some people that do not drive. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and so we're looking at a concept one down from Reinhardt down the St. Johns. Okay. So there's a Reinhardt County Trail there. But we're looking at an east-west connector trail within that industrial area where oh. there are very, very little sidewalks, but there are a lot of workers. Right. And they love using those trails and getting to their job. So yeah. they would rather a trail than being on that busy industrial road there. So we right. are looking at a concept uh, trail there as, as, as we speak. Okay. So that's good. That's good. Robert, any? Yeah, I, no. I mean, as, as we grow, we, we look at multimodal all the way through. Mm -hmm. Cars, trucks, trains, trails. Yeah. Um, and you have a lot of summer programs here in, in, in Sanford. You have the new park, the Jeff Triplett uh, uh, playing fields. You also have uh, the West Side Center. And right. during the summer, those kids and students can get on those trails and ride to their camp. Yeah. You know, baseball camp. Cool. Or, and we have tons of neighborhood parks. Tons too. of neighborhood parks. When Robert I mean has tons. some fantastic. We, we, have, parks. we have 28 parks in the city. 28 so parks. So in, stay come tuned. In, come and enjoy. Stay our tuned. Park. Yeah. And he's really put some interactive ones in there. They're very, very unique. Yeah. So it's yeah, very fun. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's what I wanted to mention too, because not only on these trails we have historic storyboards, right? A lot of a lot of the um, sidewalks have that about Correct. Stanford. And, We're a historic know, city. And, and Robert right now is redoing the memorial park plaques, which yes. is telling all the sto war stories and the conflict well, that we, we've had. We have a we have a few few venues. Um, we're we're also working with uh, our EEI um, group, uh, which is Race Equity Equality Inclusion. Yeah. Right. And um, what they're what they're looking to do is give a lot more of the of of the Black history right. in, in town, and putting those throughout. So it's it's definitely a, a way of of learning about the city as a whole yeah right and then um, don't forget you know georgetown actually has a segment of trail on sanford avenue running from sixth street all the way up to first street right and it even you know you can keep on going to the river wall that's right but along that trail itself it talks about some of our black history and cultural yes. that we have down there so read those interpretive plaques right you'll see a little uh, makeshift type steeple and that was basically a remnant of what this some of the churches that were in there there's there so there's some really good artwork on that steeple of, yeah. of stained yeah. glass you have one of the original stained glass on the windows on there over 100 years old and the other one is a, is a brand new one from a, a, an artist yeah so take a look at those and those so keeping these trails interesting and eclectic is what you want. We don't want them boring and right. the same. Yeah, so. and, and to learn about our history, you know, you can read those signs and and to put a plug in, uh, you can visit our um, historic Sanford Museum. That's right. right there. Yeah, which gives you a lot of a lot of great information, and and the ladies down there do a lot to promote the city and give you a lot of history. Yeah, and right. they'll, they'll do speaking events. Yeah, so, when you so. come here on a train, boat, a plane, automobile to Sanford. And you can see a lot of things other than Disney World. That's right. So Florida and Sanford has a lot more to offer. Right. So you can come and come and take a look. Take and, a and, and we're just beginning. We're and just so, beginning. <laughs> we are just beginning. And so, um, you know, it's it's not only a place to come and have a wonderful time. We know that downtown Sanford and 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 get your groove on on the weekends That's and it. things like that. But there are there's art here. There's culture. There's health and wellness things. There's Sport beautiful venues. nature. There's sport what? Venues. Sport, sport venues. Sport venues. Totally. Our historic stadium. There's the stadium. There's all kinds of things. So take a look at our website, SanfordFL.gov. We have a lot of information on our website. We also follow us on social media. Listen to this podcast. Share with your friends. Um, we'll be back more often as we get back into the swing of things. Our Fourth of July event just happened. We've been. It's it's summertime. It is hot out there. It's Florida, but we um, we're still you know 24/7 <laughs> city of Sanford. 
but we'll be providing more information on on this podcast and uh, we could talk for a long time we could have a tv show That's you know it. an hour you know <laughs> I'd, I'd, i kind of stick with the radio yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but, I have a face built for radio. Let's, <laughs> let's stick to that. But I, it's a pleasure, gentlemen, for you to join us. They're both extremely busy, integral employees to the city of Sanford with so much knowledge. And um, I appreciate you taking your time to yeah. share your insight with the communications office. And so we can get this information out to the public because it's for you, the listeners. What we do each and every day is for you. And if you don't know what we're doing, then, you know, it, it wouldn't make sense. So we appreciate you listening. Um, any, any last words? No, Go out thank have... you. Thank you for letting <laughs> us be here. All right, yeah. wonderful. Please visit. <laughs> this is Lisa Holder, Chief Communications and Cultural Affairs Administrator for the City of Sanford. Thank you for tuning in and listening to Sanford Says. We'll be back next time with another great topic about your city government and just the city, what the city services are for you and how you can access them. Appreciate you listening. You can find this podcast wherever you subscribe to your favorite podcast and on the city website at SanfordFL.gov. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Bye for now. Thank you.